<laughs> so I got the oh boy. I finished the doo hickey and I got the thing I'm a bobber done and connected to the yoke. Pretty much. Long story short, so it's right next to the uh whatchamacallit. I'm like a magic with the editing on the Shit, what was I gonna say? It's not cut. Cut. So we're back on the 72 convertible today. Uh, it's been a long week. I got it wired finally. It's pretty much finished. There's a couple of things still to do. Um, but, you know, as far as getting it on the road and running, uh, we have enough done at the moment. I'll show you. I think I showed you most of this already, but I'll just I'll go over it. Uh, I got the fuel pump wired. The rear lights, all rear lights battery license plate uh light we're gonna put a subwoofer and a stereo a stereo system so a subwoofer amp in the back there's not really much room for it but again i think we'll we'll tackle that at a later date we just need to get on the road for the moment i'll show you up here we got what did i do yeah so this is this is his ignition switch you see how that turns on and then that's the start uh so that's going to be relocated to the center console here there's a little sliding ashtray thing we're going to put it in a panel along with a usb charger and we'll yeah need to do that uh i'll show you when you turn the lights on it's actually pretty cool you got this kit to make them glow like that i think it's nice uh we have this is, he got all the interior done in th i'm not really sure i think it's qatar i don't know correct me if i'm wrong i don't know that it's like suede I'd, I'd call it suede but anyways i think it's quite nice he's bringing the interior today which hopefully he can start fitting um got the wipers working the fan work the fan i think it needs some grease but uh, we got the convertible top working. Going up and down. You get the idea. Uh, the window switches are on their way. Uh, I have the wires ran, but obviously need to hook the switches up. The also the ignition switch push start is going to be like the red fancy stop start. Nice one. Uh, what else? Oh, one one other thing I want to show you the. The lights that he did on this, I think, are really cool. It's actually my favorite. I think it's I love it. So uh, hopefully you guys like it. I think that's cool. I don't know. I love it. Like, really, just makes it's like a modern look to it. And it's quite funny because when he was putting this car together, uh, he did most of it. He put most of the driving train together. I just kind of, uh, uh what do you call it, directed him. But he was fitting them, and I was like, what are, you, what are you doing? I said, why are you wasting your time fitting those lights? I was like, you need to get the car built. And he was like, trust me. He's like, this is going to be amazing. And anyways, he got them fitted, and we powered them up, and it was worth every minute. I think it's one of my favorite things about the car. Uh, he's coming today with the, <clears throat> he's bringing the interior, carpet, I don't know if he's bringing the seats, hopefully the steering wheel, because the steering wheel, we need a, a decent steering wheel on it. Uh, we still have to do the stainless steel exhaust, build the engine, which I'll go in the engine room now and show you the engine. I think, I think it, it'll all go well, I hope, anyways, you can pray. We know with car building, things can always just fall apart in a second. So I'll go in the engine room here now and show you where we are with the engine. I think I showed you some of this last time, but I'll just go over it. So we have the crank, the mains, <clears throat> pistons, rods, rings, heads, valve train. These heads actually, these are, I, you got them, they're Speedmaster? I think they're Speedmaster. It's $500 per bare head. I think that that's, that's a crazy price now i obviously if you're wanting to make you know 
a load of horsepower, I'd recommend, you know, Trick Flow or AFRs or something. But for something that you're going to be cruising on the weekend for 500 bucks, an alloy head, you know, and I mean, the casting, the machining, it's, you know, we, we lap the valves into it, brand new valves, and it's perfect. Um, yeah, I think it's a really good price. We have obviously new valves. Uh, we got spring buckets, springs, retainers, keepers, rockers, lifters. I don't remember the cam spec. I picked it out like a year ago, but I know it's like, you know, street and strip. Uh, yeah, so I still need to assemble the heads. I still need to gap the rings. I have the valves lashed, lashed into the head. Uh, I'll show you over here. We have oil, new oil pan. New MSD spark plug wires, alternator, power steering pump. The, uh, what do you call it? The dampener is being reused. Personally, I would have ran a fluid dampener, but you know, it all didn't fit into the budget. Uh, new water pump. New, well, no, sorry, that's reused. Actually, this is what was originally on the car, but I just, he got it sandblasted and painted, but then I, oh, stop moving there. I got I repainted it myself just because make it a little bit it's a bit dull uh, March pulley kit you can see it has all the March stuff which is actually pretty nice uh, it has the sniper EFI hyper spark kit uh, that's the the sniper EFI uh, system there a lot of people I see have problems fitting these um, you know, they don't run this and that and they don't idle right. There's a lot of procedures. You really, really have to follow the instructions. I fit a few of them now and I, I haven't had, I'm not going to, well, actually I take that back. The first one I fit, it was a nightmare. It wouldn't idle right. It wouldn't run right. But long story short is that if you really, really read the instructions, follow the procedures and do everything you're supposed to, it actually works. So I have, I think I have two, three three customers now with these kits and uh i mean they i, I have even one of the customers i drive his car all the time and i love it um those are exhaust studs intake new timing chain that's all for the march pulley kit uh new oil filter uh i always take the oil pumps apart and check them because i i don't care just because it came new in a box doesn't mean that it's got the right clearances and it's you know been pre-lubed as you can see that's out of the box and it's dry as a bone which is not what you want so we need that needs to be lubed up before it's put together uh yeah those are all the bolts for the engine this is the the block it's resurfaced uh board 30 over honed painted clean prepped uh i put new freeze plugs in it it's all ready to go so we just need to yeah, put all this together, which, yeah, you know, hopefully I can go boom, and then it's together. But, uh, yeah, so we're getting there. Uh, there's still a lot to do. We still have, yeah, a lot to do, even though it doesn't seem, if you write it on the list, it probably doesn't seem very long, but there's still a lot to do. Um, and, yeah, I'll start building the engine. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to gap the rings. Everybody has their own way of doing it. Uh, this is my way of doing it. So I'll grab the second ring and then obviously put it in the bore. And then I don't have an old piston with a ring in it to help center it. So I push it down to the where the wrist pin levels out with the bore on either side with the new piston. So... Push it down like that. And obviously, the main thing is you want to make sure that the, you know, the the ring is not, you know, teeter totter, that it's actual level and flat. Hence, why you use the new piston to make sure it's pushed in square. And then this one, we want to do it, you know, fifteen to twenty thousandths. So right now, it is. I'll show you. So. Yeah, a 20 won't fit, 
and a 15 won't fit. Okay, obviously, if a 20 won't fit, a 15 won't fit. So we take it to our ring uh, gapper. So the way that I do it is, a lot of people take it and they put they press the ring together against these two screws, push it together and gap it. Uh, me personally, I don't like to do that. I like to do one edge. So I take it, I make sure it's square. I put it against the one edge and just take a little bit off. And then usually I, I put it to make sure it's square, that it's cut square. So then I'll bring it over and I'll show you in the engine. So then I bring it back over to the engine. I put it in like this, get it square. I take my new piston and I push it down so it's flush on either side. I get my 15 thousandths, my 15 thousandths fits. And now my 20 thousandths does not fit. So that's what we want. We want, you know, it's 15 to 20 thousandths. Obviously, you're not going to get it absolutely precise. So we want something in between that. It's probably 17, 18. And that's what we're looking for. So we do that process for every bore. Now I just have seven more to do. And then we can put the rings on the pistons. <laughs> So that's the ring gaps done. Uh, I set them all to, they're about 17, 18 thousandths. Uh, if you wanted to maybe, you know, uh, nitrous it or, you know, put a turbo on or a supercharger or anything like that, obviously you'd open them up more, but this is just a, a weekend cruiser. So there's no need to really open the ring gaps. I found that like doing it for so long, you, you get used to it like moderate pressure with the ring wrapper and kind of like six slow revolutions uh they just needed a little bit off they were about like just about ten thousandths i opened them up to about 17 18 so it calls for 10 to 20 thousandths so i think we'll be okay uh, one thing that i was doing now i'll show you <clears throat> so i was using this little stone the reason for that is um when you when you let me see if I can get it to when you do that, you see I don't know if you can see that you kind of take the sharp edge off of it. I don't know if it'll focus. Take the sharp edge off of it because obviously uh, you don't want you know the rings to have a burr on it and start scraping and scratching the the bores. So that's just a little trick that I do to make sure that it's you know that you have a a chamfered edge. Uh, the same with when you you know bore the block or anything you always want to take uh, and chamfer it um so we'll get the piston rings on the pistons and then next i need to i need to start putting the heads together which uh, i need to clear a space for that because the tool that i'm going to use is over there but we'll get to that so uh, let's get these pistons together now Okay, so got all the pistons together. I got the bearings in, uh, that's all ready to go. The next thing we need to tackle is getting the heads assembled, uh, which we'll do next.
Okay, so we have the heads together. Everything's pretty much ready to go. So I think now uh, I might just do a time lapse and um, start assembling it and get this engine put together.
so that's the engine built and assembled. Uh, we didn't really have any issues. Everything went together fine. The only thing that we had a problem with was the push rod guides were the wrong ones. Um, we converted to the aluminum heads. So the ones we originally ordered were different. It, it, they didn't work out. Uh, so anyways, I'll get those ordered. And when the engine's in the car, I'll, I'll install them then. I'll just give you a little spec on the engine. It's a 351 Cleveland 4V. Uh, it has the aluminum heads, new valves, upgraded springs. Uh, it's converted to roller rocker. It's got a hydraulic flat tappet cam. Uh, it's a mild street and strip cam. It has forged pistons, 10.9 to one compression. Um, it's got a high pressure oil pump. It has a double roller timing chain, uh, hooker headers, March pulley system. Uh, Holly Sniper EFI kit, Holly Sniper ignition system, uh, Holly Sniper in tank fuel pump kit. Um, it'll have stainless steel exhaust to put on it. I'm not sure if we're going to do it an H pipe or an X pipe yet. Uh, it's going on to a C6 automatic transmission, and that's pretty much it. Um, the spec of the engine internally is something that I came up with, obviously, externally, is something that the customer came up with, uh, Big Mac. Um, as I like to call them um, and I think it came out quite nice you know the whole look of the engine uh, I think it, it's gonna fit with the car and the build but yeah that's really it um, next we'll get it outside and we'll start fitting it to the car and get it all plumbed up and the exhaust made up um, and that's it I hope you guys enjoyed it uh, you know stay tuned for more content uh, like comment subscribe and thanks for watching